please help me I'm giving up on you. Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we will be looking at data or data, depending on how you want to pronounce it. First of all, let's talk about types of data. In the custom MPCs mod, there's three levels of data. Variables stored in each function are exclusive from the others. For example, answer cannot be accessed in interact. If we try, he doesn't say anything. And you notice we get this error, reference error, answer is not defined. That's because we defined it in the init function and tried to access it from the interact function. Now that's not to say it's impossible to access it. There are ways that we can access it. Some people like to say we that- We cannot declare variables in here and then use them over here. But those people are wrong. There are two ways to access data between functions. You can either use temp data or stored data. For example, if we were to use temp data in here, we would say data and then each data value has a name. So in this case, we'll name it answer. And then we can set its value to answer. Then in our interact menu, to access this, we have to use npc.getTempData and then the name of said data. Now let's give this a try. Oh, see down there, he said 42. There's not a lot of information on how these functions work, but from what I can tell, one is stored on disk, which is the stored data, the other is stored temporarily in RAM, and the final one is stored privately in the function. Each has different sets of pros and cons. An analogy for this is that if all players wanted access to wooden planks exclusive of who's on the server, then you'd need to store them in a chest. This would be your stored data. Unfortunately, this is the slowest method because every time you want to use wooden planks, you need to go to the chest, open it up, and take them out. The next one would be temp data, and that's to store it in your inventory. It's only accessible once you've loaded it and once you've put it in your inventory. This is still slower than having it as a direct variable, but it's a lot quicker than having to go find a chest for it. The final one is the private data. These are your local variables that you declare in the function, such as in init we declared answer. This is by far the quickest. This is equivalent to having something in your hotbar. It's already there, ready to use whenever you like. To increase the efficiency of your scripting, you really want to reduce the amounts of time you either call set stored data or get stored data. Because every time you call this, it needs to load the data from hard drive. So more often than not, I prefer to call the get stored data only in the init function. This just means that it loads it once, sets it as temp data, and that way it can be accessed all the rest of the time. Using temp data and store data means that you can also share information between different NPCs. The best way that I've found to do this is to store it as temp data under world. So in this case, we can get the brain and we can store it under world.set temp data answer answer. That way it should be stored in the world's temp data. And if we were to go create another MPC over here, we can put in as interact function mpc.say the answer is plus world dot get temp data answer and then we'll cancel the event now if we try this out now if we try this out the answer is 42.0 <laughs> I found these functions to be quite handy to be honest. I've realized that I can implement these sort of modules in certain NPCs and then have all the other NPCs access them. One of the things that I found incredibly useful was date keeping. I can create an NPC in the spawn chunks here so it stays loaded and it can keep updating the date and time so that any other NPC can access it. That way it's possible to sort of create a calendar inside of Minecraft. So let's create a guy here. There are restrictions to storing data. Data stored on the hard drive can only be numeric or text. It can't be an object or a module like what I'm about to show you how to implement 
using temp data. In the init function, the first thing we want to do is to check to see if we've already got a date stored in data. To check for this, we can use if world dot has stored data. Because we can only store things that are either numeric or text, I store the day, month, and year all as individual values. So I'm only going to check to see if day's in there. If it is in there, then I want to load the date, which this is where the modules come in. I like to load the date as an object so it's easier to access stuff. For example, the first value in the date object is going to be called day. And so I can load this from the stored data using this function. Next, I'm going to load the month. And I just do the same thing. And finally, I'm going to load the year. Now, once I've got this loaded in a module, the first thing I want to do is to save it in temp data so that way any NPC can access it. So I simply save it in the world's temp data so that way it's a shared one. And I'll call it date so it's easy to remember. <laughs> you made him do the creeper noise again, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll remove it, I'll remove it. And finally, I like the NPC to remember the last time it updated. This just helps with timekeeping. Now, if the date hasn't been stored already, it means that it hasn't been calculated. So if it's the first time this script is run, you can generate a date to be used. The way I like to generate it is to work back from the total world time. So I'll put this in an else statement. In this else statement I'm going to implement a way to generate a date based off how long you've spent in your world. Real world dates are interesting because in the real world there are seven days to a week, roughly four weeks to a month and 12 months to a year. But in Minecraft there's no weeks, there's no months and there's no years because a year is how long it takes to for the earth to revolve around the sun. And in Minecraft we don't revolve around the sun, the sun revolves around us. But you can tell how long a month is because the moon has cycles. One month in the real world is roughly how long it takes the moon to orbit the earth. In Minecraft we can see this through the moon's cycles and it takes exactly eight days for the moon to go through all its cycles. So using this I decided that one month was equivalent to eight days. Judging off that I know that Minecraft likes to use numbers that are powers of 2, like 64 or 16. So I decided that the best amount of months there could be would be 16 months. That way it keeps true to Minecraft's nature. In this imaginary calendar that I've got, there are a thousand minutes to an hour, 24 hours in a day, 8 days in a month, and then 16 months in a year. I then use those numbers to calculate the current date. So I'm going to go ahead and write this bit. I'm not going to explain it really, but I will leave comments in it for other people to figure out. Oh, there you go. I've implemented it all. I'm going to upload this code on GitHub so everyone can see it in a nicer format than on the screen. But I can go over it quickly. One thing I did while implementing this was I moved the definition of date outside of the if statement, so that way I only needed to clear it once. This helps remove repeated code. Also, I removed the world.setTempData and the NPC.setTempData outside of the if statement because it was being called the exact same way in both cases. As you can see here, I calculate the year as the total time of the world. I then through that remove the current time from that year, then calculate what day it is, judged off, dividing it by the amount of minutes in a week 
then the remainder of that here, I divide it by the amount of minutes in a day to find how many days into the week it is. Well, a month, I should say. Then the month, I calculate the remainder when I divide the total time by it, the amount of minutes in a year. I then divide that value by the amount of minutes in a month to calculate which month in the year it is. Finally, I divide the year by the amount of minutes in a year to figure out what year it is. To each of these values I add 1, that's just so it's not the 0th day of the 0th month of the 0th year, because that just sounds weird. I then store all these values in a date object. This is what we store in the temp data so that it can be accessed by all the NPCs. Finally, in this case, I store the year, month and day in the stored data so that it can be accessed next time we load and we don't need to generate a date each time we load. Now we've generated a date. The only problem is, this date isn't going to update with time. So what we need to do is just change this update function so that it does update automatically. In this update function, the first thing we want to do is pull the date from the temp data. The next thing we want to do is figure out what time of the day it is. Now we want to check to see if it's a new day compared to the last one we just saw. Well, the best way to do that is to just compare time against the last time that the NPC saw. So that was stored in get temp data last time. The reason I do this is because it's just like real life. If we were to look at our time as in 24 hour time, then it keeps going up from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 23. And then at the end of the 23rd hour, it goes back to zero. And so this way it's just saying that if the time has reset, then that means it's a new day. And so then what we want to do once we know that it's a new date, is to then add one to the value of the date. And then if the day of the month is over eight, then we know it's a new month. And so we add one to the value of the month. And if the month is over 16, then we know it's a new year. So we add one to the year. The way I do this is a little bit complicated, but it's pretty straightforward for the most part. So I'm just going to type it out and you can see how it works. This function here, plus plus, before the date dot day, means that I add 1 to the value of date dot day before comparing it with 8. This is useful because I want to add 1 to day regardless of whether or not day is larger than 8. And so in here, once I've added 1 to day, I compare it with 8, and if it's higher than 8, I reset it to 1 and then I add 1 to the month, and then I compare that value against 16, because if it's the 17 month, we actually know it's the first month of the next year, and then so finally we add 1 to the year. Now that we've updated our date, we want to update the stored data, so that in the stored data we know exactly what year, what month, and what day it is. We also want to update the temp data. There we go, now we want to update the last time that we checked what the time was, And then we have it. We now have a functioning date module. To access this date from anywhere, we can create a new NPC. What are the chances of getting the same name? That's odd. What we can do is in interact, we can pull the date from the date module. So to do that, we go var date equals world dot get temp data date. And then we want them to tell us what the date is. So we can say npc.say the date is. I live in New Zealand, so our date format goes day, day, month, month, year, year, year. So I can type that by date dot day plus forward slash plus date dot month plus forward slash plus date dot year. And like always, I want to set this to cancel so that I can actually see it in the balloon. Now let's try this out. 
I just realized I had an error in the date keeper. Under scripts update, there was three closing curly brackets here. There was meant to be two. And then also another little trick. In the set stored data, add a line for the bitwise or, and then a zero after it. This just converts it into an integer and removes the decimal points. So now if we right click the chosen one, you can see the dates, nice. We're on the second of the sixth month of the third year. Should really come up for names with these months. Just chilling in the rain. You didn't make the rain machine, did you? Peter? 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 Peter! Peter? Okay, just to finish things off here, I will set you a little challenge again. I've added a little feature to the date keeper here that I quite like. Because in Minecraft there is no dates, there's no way to tell what the date is. So I've made this clock here. And what I've made it do is every time I select this clock, Nops here will just whisper what the date is. And this chunk here is the spawn chunk. If you're wondering why I'm in the spawn chunk, it's so that these guys are always loaded. It's important if you're using this, because that way he can always update the time. And the date always gets updated, no matter where in your world you are. So if you're going to implement this, I really recommend doing it in spawn chunks. So that's my challenge to you this time. Try implement this clock feature by yourself. Of course, I know not everyone is going to want to try to do it themselves, so I'm going to supply the code for everyone. But if you think you can, at least try by yourself. It's under here where you can see bonus content. I've got a few lines of code here to give someone an example on how you would go to do it. But I haven't got the other bits in. Try to work the rest out yourself. Anyway. That's all for today, thanks for stopping by. The next tutorial I'm going to release is going to expand on modules even further and how to implement functions inside them. This is going to be really useful in the future. The example I'm going to show you is how to add an event system to it. On one day a year there's a festival and everybody in a certain village can celebrate. Anyway, thanks again for watching. See you next time.